at the top is God. And so you can create this hierarchy because once you created a hierarchy, the entire hierarchy exists. As soon as right. you say that is better than that, now we have an entire hierarchy. And at the top, the very tip top of that moral of what is good, what feels good, what is good, is God. Mm -hmm. And whenever you go to do something that you know you shouldn't do and a voice comes in your head and says you shouldn't do that, that's God. You're listening to the Move to Millions podcast with Dr. Darnielle Jervie Harmon. This episode is powered by Move to Millions Live. You already know that if you've got millions on your mind, you need to get in the room. Go now to move to millionsevent.com. Today, I am joined by Matthew Finlan and I don't even think you're ready for this conversation that we just had, but it was ridiculous and amazing. And I'm so excited for you that you're going to get to hear. I want to just take a quick moment and read Matthew's bio. Matthew is the founder and CEO of two personal development businesses. One is focused on the Mind Human Potential Academy and the other, the Body 100 Days of Discipline. He is an international speaker and coach with a proven track record of leading teams, facilitating large scale business merchants acquisitions, and facilitating multi-million dollar real estate developments. For over 10 years, the founder of Human Potential Academy has been empowering people with the knowledge, tools, and training he's learned from his own personal journey. Discover your self-leadership potential with Matthew Finland. I am so excited for you. This conversation is going to literally rock your world so much so that I'm not going to take another second. I'm going to let you listen in and I'll be back at the outro to share my thoughts. Enjoy my conversation with Matthew Finland. Matthew Finland, I'm so excited to welcome you to the Move to Millions podcast. How are you today? Super well. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Oh, I'm so excited that you were here. You guys missed it. Before we even started recording, Matthew just gave me my whole life. I've been having a hurried day and he centered and grounded me with some pretty amazing breath work. Matthew, just take a quick moment and tell everybody who you are in your own words. Yeah, thank you so much. My name is Matthew Finland. I am the founder and CEO of Human Potential Academy and a co-founder of a business called 100 Days of Discipline. I'm a coach. I help people with their lives, whether they want to make more money, get in tune with their body, improve their physical fitness, or get more of a connection to relationships. And yeah, I'm from a small town. It's snowing right now in Canada. And uh, yeah, I'm really grateful to be here. <laughs> nice. And you've seen the world. I mean, you talked about being in Hong Kong and you said you might go where the cool kids hang out in Bali because <laughs> like, I just, I love the awareness of who you are and even just in just meeting you. And I hope that you guys, as you're listening to this episode, you can feel Matthew's energy too, because as soon as we jumped on, I immediately started to relax. Like that's just the energy he brings to the table. And I imagine in the work that you do, that gives your clients this level of comfort and security to be able to be vulnerable and transparent with them so that you can help them to increase their performance. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. And thank you so much. That means that means a lot to me to to hear that because I wasn't always this way. You know, it was usually when we arrive at a place like that, it's because we were pretty opposite at one time or another. And so, yeah, thanks a lot for that. That that does mean a lot to me. Absolutely. And I, I'm, <laughs> I'm so glad you went there because I was going to ask you about your backstory. So you <laughs> didn't wake up like this, Matthew. I mean, I know, <laughs> I, like I said, I'm I'm here and I'm the benefactor of all that you've been through, I would love it if you would just share with us. Tell us a little bit about who you are, wh where you've been, and how you got to be the man that I'm getting to spend this time with right now. Okay, awesome. Yeah, thank you. So I'm from a small town in Canada. Uh, it's 3,000 people, and I grew up about five miles outside of that small town. So it was me, the woods, my dogs. I had a pretty honest upbringing. Parents did a good job you know, with, I had a vivid imagination until I was a lot older, didn't have like internet. I think we didn't even have TV until I was like 12 or 13 or something. And so that, that was really, really unique for me. And uh, I ended up going to school in Vancouver for a year. I had to get a student loan and then I ended up getting a, a job. 
And that job was in door-to-door sales. And that's actually the background. That's the, the foundation of all of my teachings, even my spirituality. It all stems from, from this. I learned what commission was when I was 20 and it blew my mind, <laughs> it blew my mind. And, uh, cause you know, I just was raised in like hourly. I didn't know that there was like performance based income. Mm-hmm. So Anyways, I was pretty good at that. And I got promoted to a position where instead of doing the sales, I was training people how to do sales. And what I pretty quickly found out was that if you just teach people how to do sales, they don't know how to do sales and they quit. And what I ended up doing, I became pretty obsessed with neuroscience. I kind of look at the the world on from like a, like the spectrum is on one end, you've got neuroscience and you keep going, you got psychology, you keep going, you got philosophy, you keep going, you got spirituality. I look at them on one spectrum and uh, I've began to teach people how to have a healthy mind, healthy body, healthy relationships. And then they started selling like machines and they stayed. And so that was really like the foundation of, of, of my, I guess, like where I've arrived at now. So I was out East, uh, I was in Ontario and uh, out into Halifax for a couple of years, building teams there. I came back to the West Coast to Vancouver. I got presented with this opportunity. And um, it's a company called Enagic. Uh, they make Kongan water machines. It's a multi-level marketing company. And I sent a, uh, my pitch video to an old friend of mine in Hong Kong. And he saw an opportunity working with me. So he joined my team. I was like, I know how to train people for sales and all that. So I flew out there for three weeks and then I loved it so much. I came back to Canada, but I went back there and I ended up staying there for almost three years. Wow! And, and, uh, and that was amazing because I was going all over the place from, from Hong Kong, checking out all these different cultures mm-hmm. and <clears throat> really loved it. And when I was out there, um, I was working for this really cool company called Asia Pacific Investment Advisors, working, you know, alongside seriously financially successful people. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, really humbling. I was like the youngest by like half. So I was like quiet, you know, got my hands on the table, just listening, paying attention, absorbing what I could. Small town boy sitting with these Chinese billionaires, right? Like, okay. And um, when I was out there, what ended up happening was, uh, well, for years, I've been working on my theory. I call it the five pillars of human potential. It's what we teach at Human Potential Academy. And so we focus on financial, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. We, we teach all of these things together. And when I was out there, uh, you know, I was partying all the time. And, but I had this like, you know, some people call it intuition. Some people call it God universe, whatever you want to call it, I had this voice coming in that was like, hey, if you go and do that thing, it's not going to go well for you. If you go and do that thing, it's going to go really well for you. And I began experimenting with that voice. Like, okay, well, let's see if it doesn't go well for me. And sure enough, it doesn't go well. And then what ended up happening was I started uh, this challenge. It was 100 days of physical fitness challenge. My best friend was doing it at the time. We ended up starting this business called 100 Days of Discipline. But when I started doing that, the discipline bled over into my financial pillar and my emotional pillar. I, you know, stopped procrastinating. I started just attacking my to-do list. I had more patience for myself, more love for myself. So as a result, I had more patience and more love to give to my loved ones. So my relationships just flourished. Spiritual pillar took off as a result of those and ended up coming back to Canada. Um, Things got a little a little wild in Hong Kong. And, uh, <laughs> and so I came back here and then, uh, late in 2021, I took on my first official coach or a client. And, um, I originally started almost all of my clients have been women, but I originally started helping women in like the wellness space do sales. Cause a lot of the times when they want to, when you want to heal someone, you don't want to make people feel uncomfortable and then you don't charge enough money and you don't close sales. And, Anyways, I, um, so I took all these things that I've been like learning over the years. And then I helped my first client with her goals. I helped my second client with her goals, her third client. And what ended up happening was they were very different, different socioeconomic status, different, just different age. This woman wanted better relationships. This one wanted better physicality. This one wanted more money, but the information that I was teaching was the same same. for them to, for them to achieve these goals. And, And so then what happened was one of my students ended up wanting to teach what I was teaching. And that kind of like 
snowballed into into what we're doing now with with human potential academy and it's it's been just a remarkable remarkable experience so far because it was like i have this saying where it's like eventually coincidences become evidence and so oh, hold on hold on hold on that was so good and i did not get to write it down say that again eventually coincidences become evidence oh matthew oh Ooh. that is so that is so good oh that is good oh my gosh okay i'm sorry continue just, <laughs> no thank you that, heck yeah that was my uh what was that 2000 2020 2021 that just like kept us on repeat um because i believe it to be true yeah uh, like with most uh spiritual things i've actually taken a scientific approach with it where it's like, I hear something and I immediately am like, no, I think that's BS, but I'll start taking data. I'm not ignorant. And then I'll be like, oh, actually, that's a lot of data adding up now. It's too many coincidences. Now we have some evidence. Yeah. And and with this past year, it was like every time it just it just couldn't have come together better with our team and with the founding team and the different shareholders that that are coming into owning human potential academy it's just remarkable like right now we've got uh we've got two strong divisions with a third one coming up and our strongest division is currently our academy which is the coaching program then we have events and retreats which is amazing cuz we've we've got these five pillars but we've got different coaches that specialize in the different arenas mm-hmm. so this coach might specialize in mental and financial pillar while this coach specializes in emotional and physical pillar and uh they come together and they make different different events so we've got like a sales and systems event but then we've got like a a breathe and expand event and right anyways really cool now and then you gotta we're... bring them together you gotta breathe and expand at your sales and systems event because that's gonna yeah. there's so much I, there's so much i want to unpack we're gonna take a quick break and when Perfect. we come back i want to dig into everything that you just said i just let you talk because my pen was just writing down some magic so we're gonna take a quick break we'll be right back Want to know what it's like to work with me and the Incredible Factor University coaching team? You can get started today with the Move to Millions 90-Day Business Growth Planner. 90 days at a time, you'll be setting your business on a trajectory that will make the Move to Millions happen much faster for you. It's got everything that you need to track every strategy, every sale, all of your KPIs, as well as your self-care and life transformational needs. We made sure we left nothing out of this amazing planner. And by accessing the planner, you'll get a behind the scenes view of what it's like to work with me and my team. Go grab yours today at movetomillionsplanner.com. You are listening to the Move to Millions podcast. My guest today is Matthew Finland. And already, Matthew, you have said so many things I want to noodle on. Okay, so I'm going to take you all the way back. This is towards the beginning when you first started. You said, (laughs) I became obsessed with neuroscience. And then you started, you were working with salespeople and you realized your own mission of healthy mind, healthy body, healthy relationships, teaching them that piece helped them to actually sell more. And then that parlayed into what is now your five pillars of human potential, financial, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. And then of course you dropped that nugget on us just before we went to break that eventually coincidences become evidence. But let's go back to healthy mind, body, and relationships. And I get this because in our work, in our framework, we use the word success mindset, which is we use it as a a collaborative to illustrate all of the things that you, you're you speaking to as you separate them out and why that is so much more important than the tactical strategy that people want to use in order to get the results. So I would love to hear your take on why healthy mind, body and relationships is what accelerates success when you're leveraging whatever the strategy is, whether we're talking sales or communication or whatever, like how does that kind of come together to create this dynamic where we see results double, triple, quadruple, just because we're really in tune mentally, physically, and uh, spiritually, and as well as in our relationships? 
Yeah, awesome. I I really I'm really glad that you said that the way that you said it because I don't separate sales and communication. <laughs> For me, they're the same thing. Sa- sales isn't just you know sell me this pen. That's not right. what sales is. Sales is effective communication. When you're trying to convince your loved one to do the dishes, it's a sales pitch, right? When you're trying to convince when you're trying to convince them where to go eat, it's a sales pitch. When you're trying I say to get that a job, all the time, it's a sales all the pitch. time. I'm like, yeah. you're always selling. How many of you wanted to do one thing and your husband wanted to do something else and you did what you did? Perfect. You sold him on it. It's so yeah, sa- exactly, that. exactly. So so um I I'll, I'll I'll take these into like two separate kind of containers cuz one is really just you. Mm-hmm. And then the other one is outside of you, right? The relationship aspect. And so we'll start with the the just you. The key to selling first and foremost before knowledge of what you're selling is confidence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How to be confident? One, knowledge really super duper helps, but also when you feel good, when you look good, and more important than both of those things is when you look in the mirror and you say like, heck yeah, like good job Absolutely. versus like, oh man, my this or that, or uh, uh, that goes a very, 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 very long way. And so when we focus on you know, like maybe a morning and a night routine and an exercise routine and eating proper food, like our nervous system is in a better state. We're earning it, right? Like that's that's the big thing is we're actually earning it because it takes discipline to have a morning routine every single day. It takes right. discipline. But whenever we make those small, impactful steps with discipline, our body, our brain, God, people around us go, good job. Right. They're rewarded by it. It's a good job. Like, you know, you did that thing you didn't want to do that, you know, you should do and good job for doing that thing. So that's, that was like the big part with that. I had people getting happier, getting healthier, and then they were just showing up. They're just showing up better. You know, they're a little bit more spry, better posture. And when the, and again, it was door to door sales. So they're bringing that kind of like that, that, that health to the door. So that that would have been that that main part. And then for I the relationship. On I just wanna, yeah, um, good. I love that. And I say all the time, your confidence will close more sales than your skills. Because I believe, and like you said, sales is effective communication. I believe that sales is a transference of confidence. I mm-hmm. believe that the person you're selling often has to borrow your confidence to make an investment, to say yes to themselves through you. So if you're confident, then you have it oozing so that I could borrow some of it so I can say yes to myself through you. Yeah. So I, I love I love that you also agree that confidence is such an important part of the sales process. That's yeah, great. my goodness. I'm smiling ear to ear for the people <laughs> that are just listening right now. That's yeah. like, because that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's fantastic. You know, I've been in this for a decade and I'm, that is, that's even better. I love that so much. Awesome. It is a transfer of confidence, right? Because you essentially just have to, you have to instill in people the confidence that they're making the proper decision. And when people are spending their money, they trade their time and their energy and their efforts and their blood, sweat and tears for that money. And so that's beautiful. I love how you said that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Okay. So when we're talking about the five pillars and I, I know how they all go together, right? But I don't ever for the purposes of the people who are listening, I don't mm-hmm. ever want to make, I don't, how do I, I don't even know how I want to say this. I don't ever want, because I have the knowledge of it to not ask the question so that they can connect the dots. Mm. So in your mind, when you think about these five pillars, like how did they come to be? And why did you choose finances, phys- physical or financial, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual? Because there are other areas of our life. So how did you drill down to these being the five that really govern our human potential and performing at whatever our peak or pinnacle is? Yeah. And, and to answer you honestly, in a meditation, it came into my brain like a lightning bolt. And I was like, oh, okay. And, uh, you know, I, I quote a lot of different ancient scriptures Mm because they do really say a lot of the same stuff but there's some lines in the bible that says when you pray get behind closed doors and pray to you with your god your father in secret and he will reward you that's obviously not verbatim but for me it seems pretty obvious that that is meditation i don't think it actually means go into your room and close your door and pray i think it means sit down close your eyes shut up and listen And and you are your room 
Yeah, exactly. Like we, You're the room. We the vessel is the room, right? Exactly. Because if you think about ancient times, they didn't have closets. Like yeah. I know a lot of people, they watched the movie War Room that came out a couple of years ago, and they're like, I'm going to create a prayer closet. Well, in ancient time, there was no, they were the closet. <laughs> so, totally. Yeah. Totally. I love that. Yeah. So I love that. So I feel like you and I could probably really trail off on oh, that. Oh, we, so, totally, we totally can. <laughs> so we'll, so we'll, keep it, we'll keep it here. <laughs> so it came through. And then how I really decided to develop it out was I was, I would say it to someone. I would say it to a Christian. I would say it to an atheist. I would say it to my dad. I would say it to blah, 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 blah. And every single person, they were just like, yes. They got it. They were like, it was just, it spoke. Exactly. It spoke to people. So like, okay. And so I really began to develop it out. And now how do they affect each other? Oh my goodness. I've been looking at this and like, like I'd be like one of those guys that's got like the big whiteboard with all the crazy lines going <laughs> all over it. Cause I've been drawing this and that's it's quite difficult probably to directly answer that however what's really motivated me has been how we have uh fractaled these different arenas and it's great to have specialists a hundred percent but like so here's two primary examples you have a lot of people that are coaches mm -hmm. and they'll coach physical emotional mental spiritual right mm -hmm. it's like go ahead, like try and be a grounded, heart centered, compassionate person when you are worried about your rent money at the end of the month. Try, <laughs> right. try, go ahead. And you can't because the financial pillar affects the emotional pillar. And then the emotional right. pillar affects the mental and the physical pillar. And without those, you have no foundation for your spiritual pillar to live inside. Yeah. And so that was, that was a really big one for me. Cause I see all these like healers panicking and scraping up money and they're not able to properly hold a grounded centered space because uh their root chakra or their foundation or their stabilization their structure their safety is not there when the, safe, right. yeah. when the safety is not there you go into a fight flight not die right. mode absolutely and we have to always keep in mind maslow's hierarchy of needs that bingo that need for security is primal like and and that is why it's important to even understand, you know, our our bodies are computers, right? That's the way I explain the chakras to people. I'm like, no, like it's not like because there there's a lot of people who are, let's say, Christian, that are like, oh, that's that's uh, I can't even think of the word. Like I don't know. Anyway, it's not biblical, right? I'm like, listen, God created everything, yeah. and He was so brilliant that He literally made our body the holder of every answer and everything we could possibly need in our life. Yeah. And if you're not conscious and willing to become conscious to those things, you are missing your potential. Like I think when I think about human potential, I think it is an, a realization and an appreciation of God, the creator of the abundant universe that we get to live, move and breathe in every single day and a desire to have the capacity to take in everything that goes along with that creation. That's totally. human potential to me. Totally, and, totally. And and when people don't get it or, or or people are like, oh, but I'm, you know, that that goes against scripture. I'm like, oh, missing the point, people. You're missing the point. Totally, totally. And we could, it sounds like, again, we could deep, go deep down, <laughs> deep down that I'm one. I'm going to have uh, to have you back so we can yeah. just pontificate <laughs> on, on some of those things and make some people mad because like, like even me and I, don't get me wrong, I love Jesus. You know, I was born and raised Christian in the church. I say today that I subscribe to the doctrines of Christianity because I do I do believe in Jesus, but I also don't believe in as religion. I don't believe in putting God in a box. Nice. I don't believe in some of the limits that are put on based on what works religiously, because religion is also was also designed in order to keep people captive. Like there there is an, an element of safety in telling you that this is all you can believe instead of believing that. God really is infinite and a part of everything. And so, you know, I know people get get their panties in a bunch when they hear me say things like that. But I'm like, <laughs> I got to be true to myself. And I'm very conscious and awake. Like I had a time, Matthew, I was engaged to be married when I was 23 or 24. And three months before my wedding, my ex fiance confessed that he had gotten an older woman in our church pregnant. And the bottom fell out of my life. I mean, I'm I'm a church girl. I'm talking about tithing, speaking in tongues, all the things. And this happened in the church. And while I did leave that church, it sent me 
on, I don't know what I, I, I wanted to discover who God really was because up until uh, that point, I was taking the pastor, the person who was at the front of the church, I was taking their word for who God was. So I decided mm-hmm. to explore him for myself. And I looked at all religions. I studied all the books, all the texts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what I realized, as you you alluded to it earlier, they all say the same thing. <laughs> yep, yep. There they're are the principles thing. That if you understand the principles, you transcend religion and you really deepen your connection to God. And that's what I seek to share. A lot of the things I reference are based on the biblical scripture, but I could point to other texts that say the same exact thing. And I think it's important, like even as we're having this conversation to ground it with that way, because I think a lot of people, they, they live in the box of whatever denomination or religious affiliation they are, and they miss God and they miss the beauty and the splendor of all that he is. And it sounds like in your work, you understand that. And as a result, you and the people that you get to work with get to experience the fullness, which excites me. A hundred percent. And I love, I love those things you're saying. That was fantastic. I, I want to just bring some uh, attention to, to, to two things. And one is a word and a concept that I think Mm -hmm. you're really, really going to love. And the first thing, and this is one thing that I've always looked at and been like, like, isn't this obvious? Jesus when he was walking around, he was literally going into temples and being like, what are you guys doing in here right now? Like he would like, like he went, he pretty much went in and he was like this, you guys aren't doing this. Like, he's like, he's like, you know, you, you can't come, you can't come. You're cool. Like, and he was going in flipping tables. Mm-hmm. Like he was going into churches and saying like, this is not right. And right. he also said, this is the temple. And then he said, where two or more are gathered, right. that's, and that's what we're doing right now. Right, exactly. This, this actually connects to, and this is, this is cool, this, this connects to a, uh, a Greek philosophy, which it, they call dialogos, dialogos, okay? Mm-hmm. Dialogue, mm-hmm. dialogos. And this, the concept of it was when two people were gathering, it was their thought is, is person A's thought, person B's thought. And then there was this third entity that was a collection of their thought, their collective mind that would like kind of create and form it. Or what I think they call the Holy Spirit. Right. So, I, I was yeah. just about to say, that sounds like the Holy Spirit to me. Exactly. I think Napoleon Hill and Thinking Grow Rich calls it the third brain that emerges, right? And the mastermind, exactly. Right, but it's it's an understanding of, of, like you said, looking at the principle, which says whenever two or more people come together, the law of fellowship, it's in yep. the book of Matthew, if you want to go find it biblically, but that law of fellowship says we only need two people for the spirit, the Holy Spirit to show up and to infiltrate, enhance, renew, transform in yeah. such a period of time, which I think is amazing. What I love about the fact that you have, you are conscious to this and you're putting this in your work. It, it like warms my heart so much because I feel like oftentimes people are like, they're missing it. Like I, I had someone say to me uh, a couple of weeks ago. Now, when I go places and and speak, I always pray first. Like I don't I, on the the main stage keynote. I'm starting in prayer. I've never had anyone walk me out, and people are like, "I can't believe you do that. Why do you do that?" And I said, "I say our money says in God we trust. Our politicians say." And God bless America. So we are not a a country, a group of people, a collective who are absent from the presence of God. And when you are and when you are present to God's presence, it creates the Holy Spirit. And I want for everyone who's in my audience to feel the presence and the beauty that goes along with the safety and security that you presented to me at the, the before we started today to ground me like that is what I want people to. And you said it, you said, you know, I don't start a coaching call without doing this because they're not going to hear me and they're not going to take the information. Like I pray at the start of what I'm doing, not because it's a religious act and I'm trying to just disrupt. Mm-hmm. I do it because I'm trying to create an environment for the best ideas to stabilize and become present for the individual so that they could maximize their human potential. And I don't even know if I would have connected those dots if you weren't here today, Matthew. That's so good. Oh, wow. Okay. Amazing. I've got some great stuff for you then here because uh, 
So there's been a lot of like groundbreaking research coming out with brain waves, especially in the past five to 10 years. And if you're, you or your listeners are familiar with Joe Dispenza, obviously he's making leaps and bounds in that arena. For me, that is where science and spirituality actually cross over. Mm-hmm. Because when you engage in prayer or breath work or both, mm-hmm. you drop into what's called an alpha brainwave state. Mm-hmm. Alpha brainwave state is where the downloads come, right? Like, yeah. like, like the regular folk. When do you enter alpha brainwave state? In the shower, classic. Mm-hmm. I got downloads. Yeah, in the that's shower. what I say. That's where mine usually happens. Oh, goodness, <laughs> downloads in the shower, and like, why is that? Okay, the thing about alpha brainwave is that it is what modern and uh, ancient gurus described as being in the present moment. So why does it happen in the shower? Because you're focused on yourself, you're doing some self-soothing, you're doing a cleaning. And so anyways, yeah, alpha brainwave is, is it's kind of like one of the cornerstones of our, of our courage curriculum at Human Potential Academy is um, these grounding and maintaining an alpha or low beta brainwave state. And so just to like, because so when I mean all religious or spiritual things, I looked at and I was like, this is BS until further notice. I really mean that. And I came across this word. uh, One of my best friends showed this to me um, recently. It's a word called apophatic. Mm -hmm. And apophatic means finding out what God is by finding out what God isn't. Hmm. And so so check this out because this is really, really cool. So what is God? Okay, who knows? But I can tell you for sure what God isn't. Right. And I can tell you that, like, let's pick something like, you know, uh, imagine just you use your imagination. I'll use mine. I don't want to say something specific. Listeners, use your imagination right now and think of something horrific that has happened to you or in history. Right. Horrific. Right. We've all got that in our mind right now. Okay, that's clearly not God. Okay, But now what we've done is we've created a hierarchy. Okay, so now you've got that terrible thought, that terrible image, that thing that's happened that definitely is not God. And now think of something good, right? Think of something, something think of something good, like, yeah. you know, whatever, that first cup of coffee in the morning, that's hilarious. <laughs> or like, you know, something amazing, like a child's laughter. Okay, that's, that's closer to God, right? Okay, right. so now, now we've got a dominance hierarchy of morals. Mm-hmm. At the top is God. And so you can create this hierarchy because once you created a hierarchy, the entire hierarchy exists. As soon as you say that is better than that, now we have an entire hierarchy. And at the top, the very tip top of that moral of what is good, what feels good, what is good, is God. And there's some interesting omnipresent things that happen across cultures despite their exposure to knowledge. Mm-hmm. And that is like murder is bad, rape is bad, stealing is bad. Mm-hmm. And whenever you go to do something that you know you shouldn't do and a voice comes in your head and says you shouldn't do that, that's God. Right. And where does that well, come from? Think, we all got that. And I, yeah, I, and I, that's what I was going to say. I, I think that the reason why is because uh, two things. First, I think about the scripture that says the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. Uh, and I mean, and I, I got a couple that are like jumbling up in my head right now. But <laughs> what that really says is God is in you, mm-hmm. right? Just like we are the church, our body, our temple is the church. The church is not a, a building, it's not a place. And because God is in us, when we are in alpha wave state, when we are fully present, we can hear him because mm-hmm. he's part of us, right? Mm-hmm. The, the scripture says as as Jesus was going to be crucified and he was going to he's like I'm going to leave you, but I'm going to leave you with a comforter. I'm going to leave you with the Holy Spirit in my absence to be able to be present for you, to ground for you, to give you those I, 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 this is the Darnell version, right? But they give you those downloads that happen in the show, shower and yeah. to remind you when you are operating outside of what it is that I desire for you and to bring to your attention and reflection of what it is that I want for you. All of those types of things are because God is in us. And I think that's what to, to round us out and bring us back. Like, I think that is what I love about the five pillars of human potential. And you're right. You can't have one. They are interdependent. 
you mm-hmm. can't you can't impact one without the other. They're completely congruent. Like there there is no way that every single one of them isn't going to be com- impacted by everything that it is that you might do, which I love that because I think it also for those of us who who do this transformational work. It makes it easier for us to pinpoint, like, I'll tell this quick story and I know we got to get ready to, to round out our conversation, but I was having a conversation with a client who said, I'm doing everything I can. I'm working so hard and things aren't changing. Yeah. And I said, well, let's go down the checklist, if you will, of the things to see if you've done them. And so then I was like, well, you know, how are you starting your day? Or, or you said earlier about a, a morning routine or an evening. Are you grounding and setting intentions at the beginning? Of the day? Oh, no, I haven't had time to do that. And what about how um, what about this? Oh, no, I haven't done that either. And so what are you doing? Well, I'm 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 hustling. I'm, I'm hustling. I'm on my grind. Well, the grind becomes non necessary. I know that's not a word, but it becomes unnecessary when you do those things like the the mornings when I don't ease into my day and I don't spend my time in my morning routine when I just hit the ground running are the days of chaos and havoc. (laughs) But when I actually tend to take the time to be grounded and supported and confident and clear about who I am, then I bring into my life experience what it is that I have commanded because we all have commanding power in who we are. And I love that the connection of understanding how each of these fits together from a human potential standpoint is how we get to sit in the seat of the significance of of being in command of who we are and what it is that we bring to the table while also giving God permission to be God inside of our lives. I just love that. This, I mean, I don't don't really want it to end, (laughs) Um, but we got to go. Like, I know, um, I know that, we, I got to have you back because we definitely need to have a part two of this conversation because this just cool. hasn't been enough time. But before I let you go, I want to do two things. So number one, I want to just give you the floor for, for closing comments. And then I'm going to ask you, you know, our three questions that I always ask every guest just to kind of ground it out. Um, but but what would you, I mean, we went everywhere and I don't even know what this episode is going to be called. But, <laughs> um, what would you like to share? What would you like to leave our audience with until you have an opportunity to speak with them again. Um, okay. Yeah. Great, great question. Uh, I'm going to take maybe two to three minutes just to do maybe a more like grounded scientific type of comparison. And this okay. is going to be really quickly where uh, what we've done is again, we've fractaled these healing modalities. Do you need to heal your bank account? Do you need to heal your spirit? Do you need to heal your body? And a really simple explanation for physical and mental pillar If you say want to lose weight, you go see a personal trainer. You focus on diet, exercising, sleeping, water. But if you're stressed out, your cortisol levels are through the roof and your body is in a retention mode. So you need to see a psychiatrist. If you're depressed and anxious and you go see a psychiatrist, but you don't exercise, right? You could talk about all the things that made you the way that you are and do all these things. But if you're not exercising, you're not getting those feel good molecules. So we've just fractaled apart the healing world. And it, from what I can tell has to encompass all five of these pillars. Mm -hmm. So what I would say to the audience would be, I would love to be in contact with you. I would love to tell people more about what I do and um, that there is hope for whatever it is you or your loved ones are going through. There is always hope The you know, God is good. The mind is super powerful. The human body is an absolute, oh my goodness. It's so freaking powerful what the human body can do, especially this day and age. Like we think about what our ancestors did and now we like, oh, I gotta, it's, oh my goodness. Our, the human body is just a yeah. freaking piece of art a powerful machine is what my mom calls it yeah so that's yeah a, i would i would love to say it. and we'll make yeah. sure that we put all of your information in the show notes so that yeah. people will be able to contact you because i know there are going to be some people who want to continue the conversation until i have you back on the show uh, I, I love i love all of that and i just feel like the consciousness has a the the 
consciousness has awakened, right? And there's so much more we could go into about wave state and our ability to shift out of the limiting beliefs and the traumas that we still hold in our body that are impacting the way that we yeah. show up and serve and all of that. That's why you got to come back. Yeah, we'll talk but about next then, time. We'll talk about heart, brain, and intuition. Oh yeah, we, oh yeah, we got so much we we got to talk about. <laughs> so you know, I, I always like to close out an interview asking three questions. Cool. My favorite quote: the book that has made the most, the biggest difference to you on your own move to millions? And then what is the tool that you swear by that has made the difference? So let's start with the quote. They'll only get one quote, eh? I think this one has been really resonating with me lately. And it's a, it's an African proverb. And it's, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Yeah. I love that. That one's been really, really resonating with me um, lately. Got it. Love that. And then book. What's the book that you would say has been absolutely instrumental on your own move to millions? Oh, geez, eh? The book that has been instrumental to me is a book called The Kybalion. Can you spell that? K-Y-B-A-L-I-O-N. Perfect. Okay. I got it right. I wasn't sure if I was going to get it right. So we'll look that up. We'll put that in the show notes as well. And then lastly, what is the tool that you swear by? The tool that I swear by. Oh man. It's just like, you know, the whole, a whole list comes up here. Google calendar. (laughs) What I love for those of you who won't see the video version of this interview is that Matthew literally went and grounded himself to come up with the Google calendar. I love that. That is amazing. (laughs) Amazing, amazing. Matthew, this has been, this has been a phenomenal conversation. I cannot wait to have you back to continue talking through so many things that I think are just going to continue to open up the plane for those who are in our, our audience to see their own potential and what's possible for them. So again, I just say, thank you. I honor you. I salute you. And I look forward to an opportunity to have you back. Thank you so much. I look forward to it. Okay. How you feeling? How amazing was that conversation? Everything he said, I was picking it all the way up, but my favorite was him saying, eventually coincidences become evidence. Oh, that was so good. And even when we had that little piece of conversation around sales, he thinks sales is effective communication. Me offering that sales is a transference of confidence. Amazing, amazing, amazing. We didn't even get to really talk about the courage curriculum that he has, but we did get to go into his five pillars of human potential, financial, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. I look forward to having Matthew back so that we can continue this conversation. For now, we've put all of his details in the show notes so that you can go and learn more about Matthew Finlan and Human Potential Academy. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Thank you for joining me for the Move to Millions podcast. The way I see it, you deserve a business that generates millions. We'd love to have you join us in May at Move to Millions Live to help you prepare, plan, and position your company for the million dollar mark. Visit Move to Millions event now to grab your seat. If you enjoyed our time together, do yourself a favor, head on over to iTunes, subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Until next time, remember, millions are your birthright and to access them, You need only move. See you next time. Take care.